Microsoft Excel 2010 Nested If Function The If function may be nested if there are more than one condition to be tested. So in this example, we're going to calculate the number of vacation days each employee receives based on years employed. Now what I did is I built a small little table here to give you an idea of what it is that the individuals will get for vacation time based on their, their number of years. So you can see years employed, if they have 10 or more years, they're going to have 20 days off. 5 to 9, they're going to have 15. And less than 5, they're going to have 10. And I think I might even put in that if it's less than 1, the faults will be 0. I think so. We'll take that maybe even a little bit further than that. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to build this in C6, a nested if function, which is going to have more than one possibility. So it's not just a test and it's true or false. It's going to be a test. If it's true, it's going to be this. If not, it's going to be another test. It's going to be this. If not, it's going to be another test. It's going to be this. And then eventually, it, there may be a false or the last answer available. Click in a cell equals, right, you got to type in equals, if, and when you type in equals if, notice that it gives you a couple of if options here, the if and the if error. If you hit the uh, tab key, it will automatically launch this with an open parenthesis and telling you exactly what you need to do now. So it's giving you the arguments that you need to do in order to build this. If this B6 is greater than or equal to 10. So that's a test. If B6 is greater than or equal to 10, what's going to happen if it's true? If you notice here, and you, and you probably didn't see this before, but you have to have a comma that separates the arguments. So a comma separates the arguments. So that's just the test. So I need to put a comma in here. Now notice how this highlights value of true. It wants us to find the value of true. If it's true, what I want to do is I want to return the value 20, right? I want to, I want to give them 20 days. And then typically what you do is you'd hit comma and then you'd put a value if false. But there's more than one possible answer here, right? There's, there's this answer, this one, this one, or maybe just a zero. So now we got to build another if statement. So you just build an if, tab again, and that gives you another open parenthesis. So what's the other test that we're going to build? Well, we're wondering if B6 is greater than or equal to 5. And if it is, let me put a comma in here, then what would the true value be? Well, we're going to give them 15 days. Another comma, and let's build another if. If B6 is greater than or equal to 1, let's return 10. And then if you want a false, okay, so we have basically three trues right now. I mean, it goes down the line until it finds the true. But if, if maybe they have zero, maybe they just started or something like that, and they don't get the 10 days, you could always do a comma. And you can see right now it's looking for the false answer right now. We'll put in a zero. Now here's the key. Look what we have here. I have an open parenthesis. I have two open parentheses, three open parentheses. You have to close those parentheses. Now watch as I close these at the end here. So there's the purple one, there's the green one, and there's the black one. So that's closing those arguments. Hit enter. Let me go ahead and double click and copy it down just to see if this works. Remember what I said for a false was uh, that if it's less than one, they're going to get zero. So let's make this one less than one. So we'll make it zero. And sure enough, look at the result of zero. Thank you for choosing LogOnToLearn.com. Educating the world anytime, anywhere.